I'm Jack Barsky. I'm a retired, perfectly reformed ex-undercover KGB agent. And today I'm going to watch a TV show about uh, Russian spies. Uh, we'll make some comments and tell you what's real and what's not. And you get it from the horse's mouth. There's nothing real in James Bond to the extent I've watched it. Ian Fleming, who came out with the James Bond character, he was British intelligence, but he turned into an entertainer. And I don't think he ever pretended to tell a story of what it's like to be a spy. So there's this fundamentally distorted notion in the, in the public as to what a spy is and how they operate. And that helps actually want to be spies or people who want to spy because they're more normal people than than, than you would imagine. They're not super superheroes and they don't run around shooting up uh, places or people. They're very normal. They're the spy next door. Super secret spies living next door. They look like us. They speak better English than we do. They're not allowed to say a single word in Russian once they get here. Oh, hi, you came. Just for a second to uh, bring over brownies and welcome you to the neighborhood. What do you do, Stan? I'm an FBI agent. Interestingly enough, uh, this is sort of uh, art imitating life because the FBI, when they investigated me, they actually bought the house next door and had a couple of agents live there for six months to keep an eye on me. The folks next door to me never talked to me. The idea was maybe that they would uh, strike up a friendship with my wife, but they sort of dropped the idea. So they were just there looking at me, pretty much. Scott. Also quite realistic, uh, uh, the East Germans were notorious and really good at this. They're called Romeo spies. In East Germans, good-looking young men were sent out in droves to befriend lonely, middle-aged, uh, maybe plain women without male attachment who worked in the West German government and became their lovers, in some cases even married them, and then pretended to work for some kind of, uh, like here, the, this man says, you know, I work for Sweden, for some kind of a world peace organization or whatever. Yeah, I need your help, I need your help. After the wall came, Berlin Wall came down, there were about 50 or so women prosecuted for doing this kind of work that this young lady is uh, uh, depicted here as doing. Working for a foreign agent, either the uh, East German Stasi or the KGB, without knowing it, as a love interest. So, quite realistic. A year from now and he's done. It was a lateral move. They can cut your balls off, stuff them in your mouth, tie you to a radiator in the basement, and then call it a lateral move. Bartholomew took the fall for Timoshev. Counterintelligence, FBI has, has always followed as many uh, diplomats or employees of the Soviet Union in D.C. or the, the folks in, in New York that work for the United Nations, and they're following what I think is a, a secretary and see what she's up to. Three days? When he said things would get riskier, I guess this is what he meant. Well, no, this isn't risky. This is insane. We need six months for this at Philip. least. Philip. No, I'll send a flash tonight saying it's operationally impossible. These are orders, Philip. Yeah, and they'll listen to us because we're the ones on the ground. Here is an order that was given where the couple has difficulties uh, buying into that order. I cannot recall one order. They were all requests that uh, was given to me. They would always sort of ask my okay for things. And sometimes I would override them because I was the man in the field. I had a better idea of understanding risk and what's feasible and what's not. So this is uh, dramatically uh, enhanced. Where'd you get that? The mall. It's just a bra, Mom. I'm 13. Exactly. Mom, things are different than when you grew up. I actually was worried about uh, if the FBI catches me, oh my goodness, and everybody gets deported and my daughter would be a warden of the state, uh, my wife would be uh, kicked out of the country. This is a realistic conflict. She's worried about what will happen to my children when we get in trouble. That can squeeze a parent's heart. I see a lot of foundation in real espionage. Obviously, they need to enhance it in some way. They need to compress it. It is unrealistic that, you know, all of that could have happened to that couple in that, uh, in that time frame. In totality, it's entertainment, but it has 
decent, a decent foundation in reality. As far as the depiction of the psychology of being undercover, I would give it a eight to nine. When it comes to real espionage and what people do, I'd say I give it a five simply because, yeah, there are bits and pieces of reality, but as they are put together, they become entirely unrealistic. Being an agent is probably 95% waiting and 5% action. There is no real one movie that I say that I could, could recommend if, as far as the reality of espionage. I think the TV series, The Americans, comes closest to all of them. But if you really want to know what it's like to operate as a spy, you need to read memoirs or you need to read something written by John le Carré who was a British author who was, I think, MI5 or MI6, but he was British intelligence. 